you have joining every session? Do you check it? Or, oh, just, you know, I'm in a hurry. Let me, let me join. And let me get ready. So we are in a hurry. It is the mind wants to be the master. And if the mind wants to be the master, uh, then intellect hides. Intellect hides means the knowledge hides. Knowledge hides means I'm already in ignorance. You look at the teachings of these great masters. Every time you, you, you learn very subtle <coughs> layers of understanding. And if the intellect hides, it means it is in ignorance. And out of the ignorance, you are listening. And you are doing the practice. Oh, just you leave the practice today. I'm not interested today. Then what happens? <clears throat> that mind takes over you. Look at this. I have been attending the session of this beer guy and there is no change in my life. So the mind goes outside. Mind goes outside. And we, <clears throat> we continue to struggle that there is no change in my life. One of the best ways to do it I have been telling you that you understand we all are intelligent. You are wise. So we understand, but that understanding must be translated into an action, <clears throat> into my lifestyle. If that knowledge is not applied, it will not work. Do whatever we want to do. We, we make claim that I know then we may become a philosopher, but not, knowledge is not applied and it will not change. So the first thing first, remember Om Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karvavahe, Ejasvina Ma Vidvesha Vahe. If you look at each line, it demands the intellect to contemplate and reflect. And when you contemplate, I think I talked about it. <clears throat> Every day in the morning, it is the uh, creating an auspiciousness, and the mind should go for any mantra, just Om Shanti for five or ten, five or ten minutes depending on your time. <clears throat> then you listen and learn. How many times you have heard this Shanti Mantra? Maybe 25 or 50 times. But then ask your intellect, Om Sahana Vagatu, let us both enjoy together. What is enjoy together the wisdom Okay, I will enjoy the wisdom with you, beer guy, but not with the honey. So you are not applying the wisdom. You are not applying the mantra in your life. Do whatever you want to do. It will not work. <clears throat> oh, no, my son is crazy, so it's difficult. Who says it is? My mind says it is difficult. I told you a simple example, the geometrical theorem. So I have to start with the belief, let us enjoy it together, wherever you are, with whomsoever. Are you getting it? We all are seekers, so that's what I'm saying. So you see that, that when I say, let us enjoy it together, wherever you are, with whom, you enjoy, you can only enjoy with your 
intellect, not with your mind. Intellect should have that knowledge. Knowledge means I'm living in a moment. Sahaviryam karva vahe. Look at the Mashanti Mantra. It has to be applied, my friends. If you don't apply, then you are not a higher level of a seeker. And then even if you listen, I will talk about that. <clears throat> what happens, where the blockage is, and why we do not evolve in progress. So that is our topic today. Sahviryam karva vahe. Sahviryam, maybe work together with a great energy in the intellect, so I'm aware. I live with that. <clears throat> May we work together. What it means. Now my honey doesn't listen to me. I believe geometrical theorem is that may we work together. Now my honey doesn't listen to me. May we work together. Are you understanding? <laughs> I'm against this thing. Your intellect says, may we work together. <laughs> Are you getting it? <laughs> so if you don't follow this, you have to prove it in your life. If you don't work together, forget about it. Forget about this East and West. You know, I've been learning for a couple of years. Then do it. Even for 10 years, 20 years, it will not work. I'm giving another meaning of the Shanti Mantra. Sahavi Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu I am fully aware and alert. So my honey says, you are crazy and I smile. Why? I am in the mode of discernment and dispassion. I see what is, what are the expectations of my honey? Can, be, can I fulfill? My ego says no. An intellect is full of knowledge. I said belief. Geometrical theorem, pure. Sahaviryam karva vahe tejasvina vadhi tamatsu tej. Glow. So the mind should glow with the knowledge. That is another meaning of this. Mantra Ma Vidvisha Vahe. Oh, Ma Vidvisha Vahe. This crazy mind has instant conclusion of jealousy, hatred, duality, dislike. Many people have left the session because of this. My intellect says, what it says, ma, ma vidvisha vahe. Let me not have envy. And we have more envy in our with the near and dear ones than the stranger. <laughs> Do you see that? At our home. Ah, my dad doesn't live. My son. Oh, I don't want to talk about this. You know, my. So the master is pointing out how to change that mindset. These are the impurities of the mind. As long as the impurities of the mind is present, there is no chance of realization of the self. Who says? Every master says. Let us delve a little deeper into this area so that you will understand clearly and so what it says, we have discussed about four types of seekers. We discussed about four types of seekers. The first type of a seeker is distressed. I talked about it. <coughs> you know, modern in medical science, when you have a problem, then only you go to the doctor. Isn't it? But Eastern wisdom says you already have a hidden problem. You are not recognizing it. It will take the form of illnesses. So whenever you are ready, you have heard it, you must go. 
No, no, I feel healthy. No, it's still you go. So the first category is distressed. What does it mean? Now, what happens in distress? What the Eastern wisdom says, I have to find the real self and I have to, once I know the real self, there is an end of suffering in my life, once and forever. Now, I'm also a seeker. I'm interested in learning Eastern wisdom but I have a distress. So that is the first kind of a seeker. And the, the first category of a seeker, what happens? These seekers offer turn to the Eastern wisdom, which you can say the spirituality or a meditation is a response to the external circumstances. Does the house say that you are, why you are sitting in, in me? You are crazy. Does the house blame and complain me or I blame and complain? Ask yourself. Ask yourself. Does the car complain to me or I complain about the car? External situation, things, objects and people internal perception is distorted is known as the guy who is distressed so i have to correct first my internal perception are you getting it they're going deeper so what happens because my internal perception is distorted i don't see the house as it is oh there is a problem yes i told you the about the solar panels last week. I have to find a good solution. That's all. Oh, what happened, you know, there is a big problem. My internal perception. So that is the first problem. Second problem, then I have emotional dependence, emotional bondage. I don't have the emotional freedom. Now, with these two, only two, let us take two. Now, these two tendencies of the mind will result into inconsistent practice of this journey. And that is why ha, you have to work hard. No, no, I'm more intelligent. I understand what you're saying. I understand. But forget but remember, if you are distressed, no chance of reaching to the top. You're doing the practice. You will relax. You will calm down. You will remember those principles. But majority of the principles will not pass through your intellect. Second category, you are a seeker of the knowledge. You are distressed. You want to find solution of your stress and suffering, you feel caused by the world outside, yes, you will find some solution, but problem will continue. You are a seeker of the knowledge of the real self, geometrical theorem, that I am the real self of the nature of peace and happiness, and I have to prove through my intellect, through my practice, through my lifestyle, I will realize it. Clear? So intellectual clarity is there. There is no doubt is there. We follow the systematic approach and we drop and dissolve the skepticism if it moves into my mind by the knowledge. MM, I told you first, then, then what is the second listening and learning? Every time I listen and learn, my intellect should find out some new meaning, clarity. Uh, then contemplation and reflection, then practice and experience. I do the practice and I hold on to that practice 
after the practice, I want to know what happened, why I did the practice. I come to your house, I reached your house, practically. So I have to do the practice, I have to check what happened, what are my experiences, I'm calm. No, I still have a lot of challenges. My mind is still complaining. So it means what, what I should do. I should find out the time to repeat the practice to help the mind to reach to that state. And then you apply the wisdom in your daily life, which we have done in the mantra. Let us enjoy teaching together. No, let us enjoy talking to my honey together. Let us enjoy living with my sibling together. Let us enjoy talking to the stranger together. That is the meaning of this mantra. What will happen? Your mind will naturally move to the namaste, even to the stranger, even to your honey, even to your son. And you'll find out that changes are taking place deep inside. Oh, mellow, very soft and gentle. Think. We have to think a lot. We have to contemplate. Third category is the seeker uh, who is doing very good in the life, financially, otherwise, relationship, everything is good. <clears throat> so they want more and more from the external world. They are not looking inside. They have the wealth, they have the means, they have all the, everything is there. Okay, uh, you are talking about, I gave an example. When I was in India, there was a sick guy who used to attend, who had the business of air conditioning. So there I used to give five days intensive session, every day five hours. So it means the 25 hours. <coughs> So this guy, so he repeated this 25 hours of intensive. <clears throat> so I used to give those intensive three weeks and one week is rest, again three weeks in a month. So he attended almost uh, six uh, intensives, 30 hours. And he came to me with uh, a lot of gift. He said, sir, it is wonderful program. I said, wow, well, how come it is a wonderful program? Can you highlight on this? He said, you know, my income doubled. And I'm looking for that. It will become five or ten times more. I will not leave your practice in intensive session. So that is another. Because now I, what I'm searching for, I'm searching the real self. The real self is inside. <clears throat> that is okay. Let the income go. It's okay. But my focus, my focus is somewhere else. Goal of the Eastern wisdom is to find the real self, to realize the real self, to think, speak, and act out of the real self all the time, 24 by 7. That is our goal. <clears throat> now then, then the fourth category. That is very dangerous area. That is what I wanted to speak to you. Normally it appears it's not a dangerous area. <clears throat> he already knows it. He has practiced and he feels or she feels that he knows he has reached it. He finds a sense of equanimity. He finds that there is no internal in the mind, external in the speech and action. There is no duality and a conflict throughout the day. Days after days, weeks after weeks, months after months. You will realize that, oh, this is what uh, this weird guy is talking about the real self. <clears throat> I have. 
found it. That is, that is one way. Another way that you have a kind of a selflessness in your mental state. In the mind, there is a sense of selflessness. Right. Then only you will be able to dissolve that false I and you should have that state of the consciousness. And when you live into that state of the consciousness, it constantly continues. So where is the danger you said? So in this category of his people, there are two categories. Look at the subtle nature. Majority of our intellect or the mind might have thought about it. So I wanted to bring it. First category. First category that you are consistent in your practice daily without fail. And because of that practice, it purifies your mind. And because of the purification, the revelation takes place. And because of the revelation, your mind undergoes a transformation. And then then what happens? You are not shy of expressing these principles. And I can bet you, you express those principles in your thought, speech and action. They will ask you where you are learning. I also want to join. Because there is a conviction coming from you. Coming from you. And that conviction attracts other people. No, I have to also join. You may have a lot of questions. You know, people will not join. This guy is a crazy, so I will not talk about it. You are blocking yourself. Where is the second category? It is almost 90%. <laughs> <laughs> what is that second category? <laughs> I could say 10% is there. Uh, first category, what is the second category? You are constantly listening and learning from the teacher without fail, without break. You are listening and learning, but you are lacking the practice. You are constantly listening and learning. You don't fail to listen and learn. Huh? You are constantly learning, listening and learning. So your intellect has that intellectual knowledge. It gives you some glimpse. Oh, it gives you some glimpse that yes, you are there. But you have yet to purify the mind. You have not purified the mind fully. You have a knowledge. You have a clarity. 100% clarity. You have a conviction. But you have not purified the mind. 90% of the people are there. They say, what a wonderful principle it is. How? Second category. And in this second category, you will find, if you find a problem, it will be so deep, challenges in your life. If you are not consistent in your practice of why and how it comes. I told you Eastern wisdom is 200% scientific. Cause and effect relationship. You have to start with this premise in your life. That maybe as a teacher, I'm not answering your doubt today. But as you progress, all the answers, all the doubts are clear. But I'm just giving you doubt. I'm just giving an answer to second category. You see, intellect is there. By constant listening and learning, your intellect undergoes a change. 
but that change is not going to the mind. Understand why it is not going to the mind. <clears throat> and what happens if it is not going to the mind? Mind sense organs. Intellect also the sense organs, mind and the sense organs. I'm just giving an example of that so that you will appreciate how you are progressing. That depends on you. That depends on you. Someone is staring at you. How do you feel? And especially I'm talking about uh, someone is staring at uh, beautiful uh, girls are there. Yeah. <laughs> what happens? Can I understand the very process of one example of staring? Are the eyes staring or the mind? Break up into parts. <laughs> Why are you staring at me? Uh, sense organs, no. They are not staring. It is the mind staring. But why the mind is staring? You'll come to know that transformation has not taken place. Why the mind is staring? Mind is seeking the pleasure outside. It has become a thinker first. Thinker, oh, what a beautiful. Second, it becomes the doer, seeking the pleasure to become an enjoyer. So this thinker, seeker, and enjoyer in the mind is the false I, not transformed through the knowledge present in the intellect. Did you get it? So in the fourth category of the seekers, we have two types, consistent practice. That is why I created that steps. Applying the wisdom, I have done the practice in the morning, but now I am fully aware I have to apply this wisdom in my life. That is why you have seen that five or ten minutes before I am ready for a session. Why? I have to apply this wisdom. I am selfish. What I said in the second category, understand, I have been listening and learning. I understand the principle clearly. I can talk about it, I can express it, but, but, my mind says yes, spirituality is in one word and this materialism is another word. I keep that separation all the time. <clears throat> it will not work. You will feel calm and relaxed, no doubt. But it will not work. It will not lead to transformation. Again, understand, I look at, I come to your house and I look at your table. It is wonderful. I should appreciate it. But my intellect says, come on, continue to live in the state of discernment and discretion, even appreciating. That only comes by the consistent practice. Because you have experienced by the practice, mind is living into that state. But if only it is intellectual, while returning home, you will say that, let me buy this table. 
the mind constantly triggers. It is a thinker. In the mind, you have a thinker, you have a doer, you have an enjoyer. It is the false eye. It will, it has not transformed you and you will lack an understanding and realization of the real self. Does that make it clear? Senses are not the doer. It is not the enjoyer. It is the false eye, which is a doer and enjoyer, is the problem. So it means what? The impurities are still there and on in the mind and the knowledge is present in the intellect. You have a clarity. You are very clear. You can articulate that knowledge. First category, who has done work to purify the mind simultaneously. What is the way to find out that I have a pure mind? How simple it is. Every day you are living, isn't it? You are living since the time you wake up until you, until you retire to the bed. And every day we have a new situation because the mind perceives a new situation. New way of talking, expressing, working, etc., etc., etc. Long list. Long list. Every day. I have to check daily analysis before retiring to the bed. I have to check that did I had any chance? How many times I have the anxiety which I suppressed, which I expressed, which I thought of, which I acted upon. Oh, that smooth sailing of calmness, calmness throughout the day, first day, second day, third day. Yes, you are progressing, you are evolving. The impure mind will not allow you to have this experience. Second category. Uh, no, my, no, my honey does not understand. I have asked him to join the session many a times. Ah, yes, I know. You are already awakened. That's why you have analyzed the other people. The false eye is there. Ah, you are a great master. You are an enlightened guy. You have a different opinion about others. And what about others, the near and the dear ones? Come on. <laughs> Do you see that? That is what I wanted to talk about before I wanted to step into. <clears throat> so purification comes by karma. I express my thought, speech and action. Knowledge is there in the intellect, but I don't express in the thought, speech, and action. How can I know it is working? My intellect says, no, it will not work with my honey. Or she, she, he or she or does not understand. Oh, so you understand. Very. You all might be thinking <laughs> in your mind. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> this is very subtle but uh, very important. Before we enter into these 40 steps, close your eyes. Eyes are closed. First, we will follow the uh, passive step in the stage one. Eyes are closed. <clears throat> Place of the body. Awareness of the space all around your body, position of the body, and the posture. I'm giving you a time, few seconds. How come few seconds? Because you are consistently doing the practice, it's not a big deal for you. Even the second category, your intellect understands. So it can bypass the impurities of the mind. That is what I wanted to uh, discuss. 
in this station. So being comfortable, yes, you are comfortable. Being carefree, you are carefree. And now can you really understand that why I added the six neighbors, the step of the six neighbors? Now you can understand. We are going through six neighbors. We scan it. We become aware of it. From where this thinker, doer, and the enjoyer comes pertaining to the external world. So what I say, first look at the breath, aware of the flow of the breath. With that reference point of your mind, first neighbor is the world outside of things, of people, of relations. That is where the mind is traveling. Why? It wants to be an enjoyer and the doer. And that is why we say we, we drop this enjoyer and doer. We are doing a karma yoga. So we say attitude inside our head. First should be clear. So the world outside, you know, I'm okay. Mind says I'm okay. <coughs> One guy in the New Jersey group uh, whose house is very near to the fire station. And when he hears the sound, he has no ability to withdraw his mind from that state, sound. Look at it, how easy it is and how challenging it is. So I can understand his nature. Second uh, neighbor is the body, awareness of the body. I become the doer and the enjoyer only with reference to the body in the mind. Look at it. Third neighbor. Third neighbor is the energy. And this energy is used by the impure mind in staring, in seeking the pleasure outside. But what I am proving by practice and listening and learning and attending the session as a geometrical theorem that the real self is of the nature of permanent peace and happiness. So how the contradictions can exist. Fourth neighbor is the mind. So I have to see, is there any kind of pain in the pleasure, idea of a profit and loss, victory and defeat, loss or gain? It is due to seeking Pleasure, avoiding pain, and now come to the intellect. I thought. So this I thought is guided by the, dictated by the mind or by the knowledge. <clears throat> I thought is guided by the knowledge, listening, learning, contemplation, reflection. I thought should be guided by the mind. I have to do the consistent practice. I'm making these principles very simple for you to understand. And then the last neighbor is the ignorance. Beyond that neighbor is the real self. So I continue to have an awareness of the flow of the breath. Why? I'm asking the mind to have a continuity of the flow of the breath, anything that is continuity, which is not changing, mind gets an idea. And then we go to the mandala charan. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu, sarvesham swastir bhavatu, sarvesham swastir bhavatu. May there be happiness for all. It is your part of contemplation and reflection. We all are wise and intelligent. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu. 
शांतिर्भवतु शांतिर्भवतु मे देर बी पीस फॉर ऑल फाइंड आउट दैट पीस इज बी ऑन द सिक्स नेबर्स यू कैन इजली रिलेट इंटेलेक्ट डिमांड सम दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रोसेस so that's why i redesign these steps sarvesham sarvesham purnam bhavatu sarvesham purnam bhavatu sarvesham purnam bhavatu may there be completeness in all you will be able to understand and recognize whether this i thought i come false i is working through the intellect or through the mind or through the both it works through the intellect goes to the mind so mind follows what the knowledge says you are purifying the mind but the mind consistently is seeking to be an enjoyer and the doer outside you already understand that sarvesham mangalam bhavatu sarvesham mangalam bhavatu sarvesham mangalam bhavatu may there be a speciousness for all okay a speciousness for all says number 2 looking inside the forehead in the space it becomes a casual awareness for you dropping on shanti experiencing the steadiness in the body and then start breathing long and the hissing long hissing not very fast into the bed into the chest so every time you inhale you what you do you expand all the ribs and you exhale contract all the ribs and check there is a rhythm as you inhale expansion as you exhale there is a contraction or you can say expansion in the squeezing expansion and the squeezing of the rib cage it should take time don't do it in a jerk don't jerk no jerk no jerk i'm still stressing no jerk check so you are expanding the ribs and you are squeezing the ribs even if there is a jerk and a shock into your rib cage where your whole body shakes not good it is not right no one or two people are doing it correct yourself you have to experience so now we are moving our breathing practice for complete withdrawal of the mind in sight to dissolve that false i who becomes the enjoyer and doer with reference to the sex neighbor your expansion in the squeezing undergoes a rhythm that is important and if it goes into the rhythm you are doing good no jerk if you have adopted a wrong habit you have to change you see how i check your level of awareness and now stop it allow the just watch how the breath returns to the normal breathing pattern the nature does it looking at the flow of the breath looking at the flow of the breath okay 
Đây. And now we will go for the second round. Look inside the forehead again. Om Shanti continues throughout. Even if we pause, even if we return from the fast breathing. And then you start breathing again into the chest. You inhale longer, deeper, and you check experience each rib is expanding and you exhale all the ribs almost joins together long in the only point you do the deep breathing you do the long breathing and you add the hissing sound so it's not the fast one <sighs> Long in the hissing breath means you create some kind of a noise to make your mind aware. So what will happen? You can easily endure. It will be a joy of doing. I'll try to explain these steps again and again. Last time I, perhaps I talked about if you have a long breath and it takes little time, so it helps your peripheral and chemo receptors to be activated. They regulate the level of our, our percentage of our carbon dioxide and oxygen. So you continue. So what happens is that a little change in the concentration of oxygen results into either a kind of dizziness or peculiar sensation. So be with it. Stop this. Take your mind to the flow of the breath. Continue with the Om Shanti, the mantra, and stay there. Just experience the changes. <clears throat> experience the changes so you are it is the intellect now it is gathering the knowledge why all your experiences changes your previous experiences where I'm pointing you consistent practice so we move our as a, we move our seekerhood from the category two to the one. And now the third round, start breathing again into the ribs. Same way, long, deep hissing. Entire rib case expands and entire rib case squeezes. And you Fine, no jerk, please. No jerk in the body at all. Om Shanti continues. Beautiful. Yes, it is good. Continue. With the nostrils, you are doing it. Not with the mouth. Even if your nostrils are blocked, it's okay. Still, you try to do it. And the best thing to do is that you put some sesame oil or any clearing agent into the nose so that we will have deeper uh, breathing practices. Continue. We are only doing for two minutes. No worries, and I'll just in following sessions, I'll give you what exactly happens by these pranayama practices. One of the best things that we can do is we keep aside all the impurities of the mind for a while, 
during the practice of meditation and we can go deeper. But we only keep aside and there will be a little purification too. Now allow the breath to be normal, watch it, have flow of the breath and check the joy of doing with change in your experiences of sensation, maybe tingling, maybe vision, maybe colors, maybe certain images will appear. So we are not entering into other area, we are just doing the finest and the highest practice of meditation. The lower will be, I can say that focus on the chakra or the image. No, we are not going there. We have already done enough of our practices and understanding. Now we have to do the very breathing, looking inside the forehead again, Om Shanti, continue still. And then start breathing into your belly, expands like a balloon, contracts and it squeezes during exhalation. <laughs> Check that there is no jerk in the shaking in the body. And when there is no shaking, so you are doing the hissing breath and it is taking the time. I explain in another way this belly breathing. You check that all the four reasons of the belly expense, lower, upper, right and the left. We have a lot of mental congestion which also affects this belly movement. So every time you find all the four reasons of this belly expense and all the four reasons squeezes down. Sometimes we find the upper reason squeezes. So it, it's a matter of regular practice to reach to that state. Why again? One reason is being these two receptors. And other reason is the lower lobes of the lungs consume more oxygen than the upper lobes. <clears throat> well, just we'll talk about those aspects later. Continue. <laughs> Long, deep, hissing breath, no jerk, no shaking. Om Shanti continues in the stillness in the entire body except the belly continues. Yes, stop this breathing. Om Shanti continues. You have a awareness of the flow of the breath and enjoying the changes in your experiences. Patanjali says, Tatakshiyate Prakasha Varnam. Simple translation, it purifies the mind. Yes, no doubt. 
second round looking again inside Om Shanti continue start the second round <laughs> Belly breathe. Expansion like a balloon and contraction. Squeezing. Squeezing means just a metaphor that the belly touches the spine at the back. So it means you are doing a complete belly breathe. Doing the complete belly breathing means what? Lower lobes of the lungs consuming maximum oxygen. And that is another reason of doing little for a longer period. So when we do it with a quick and a fast breathing, that too helps. No doubt. But that has other roles. So here our role is to purify the mind and consume more oxygen. Why? It results into a variety of experiences, our vision and colors, etc., etc. I heard back that why these vision and colors we have we will answer that clearly. And leave this flow of the breath, awareness of the flow of the breath, Om Shanti continues. Get aware of the flow of the breath also and your Om Shanti also continues. We are engaging the mind as much as possible so that it does not reflect subconsciously any sense of impurity. Yes, we'll have a third round. Om Shanti already continues. Start breathing into the belly. <laughs> Yes, you will find all the six rounds already clears the flow of both the nostrils. One way to look at it, it will definitely help your cord and cough and other stuff. And uh, sec but more important that we want the flow of the breath should be equal. That is the primary motive. Why mind moves into another dimension. And stop this flow of the breath. Om Shanti continues. Stillness in the body you experience. And in that state, move the mind. It is already inside the forehead. Visualize the triangle. Now replace the triangle instead of a space 
and dropping Om Shanti on each side of a triangle. I don't want to miss that opportunity, that state of the mind. So we skip the two steps. And when it sings, that is the moment singing mentally loudly um, pushing the mind deep inside the cave of your heart mind seemingly stop shanti and absorbed into self-absorption you see all the you are saying to the mind go deeper inside uh, i don't see anything no you will see do you see? That is an expression of this step. <clears throat> Why? I want to prove I am the real self. Well, that rhythm breaks, return to the triangle, sink it, go back. If it is not, enjoy that state, carefully aware. And absorption also means a kind of an objectless state. Have you ever, have you realized, you might have realized it. So then only we have Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Bring your mind on the right hand You'll feel definitely sensation Bring your mind on the left hand Lift your both the palms Place it on your eyes Open the eyes inside the palms 
Know your experiences, bring the hands down. How are you, Stephen? I'm good, sir. Thank you very much. Um, noticing that I'm living in peace and happiness more than I'm not. And as far as meditation goes, I was completely absorbed um, throughout. And the only point of recognition was within the heart center. Um, I noticed a, a warmth that existed that then pulled my attention away because everything outside of the heart center was really cold. And um, I recognized it and immediately went back to the warmth and uh, actually got startled by you ending the meditation. So, thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful sharing. It is self-explanatory. So, how are you, David and uh, Jared? Sir, thank you. The uh, lesson was very good um, for me. The, the focus of the lesson was the false eye. And so, going into the meditation, I was treating the false eye like an object. And by the end of the meditation, <coughs> I felt empty but free. Right. You see, another way to check, you are in the world outside, talking, living, working, and you find a kind of unease, unease with a person in your relationship. That unease comes not from outside, it comes from the false side. It's very easy to recognize. It comes from inside me. So that false side is not guided by the knowledge. And if it is guided by the knowledge from the intellect, the false side from the mind will fall away. But it has to be done. I have to move from category two to one. I have explained it in a simple way. How are you, Jerry? Sir, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, I like the lesson as well, the false side. Um, I find the mind always wants to um, work together. And so if something's not working together and there's not an understanding, then the mind right away wants to say, well, what, why is this being, why is this difficult? And so try a different approach or yeah. whatever that might be. Um, the breathing was like a cleansing, the repetitive breath just yeah. kept cleansing more and more yeah. and more. It was very cleansing today. Yeah, we yeah. will be doing this uh, breathing a little more intense. And you rightly said, because the intellect says, why I'm not able to strike that harmony? So this false eye is coming from the intellect. And uh, Paul Sai coming from the mind, oh, he does not understand, you know, I have told him many a times, you know, he doesn't want to change. Leave this. Yeah. You see the two different perceptions. Paul Sai will continue to exist, but we are showing it knowledge or we are showing it the impurity. That is what is uh, what needs to be understood. In that process, we will start working outside. And that is a very subtle part of the Karma Yoga. I will be talking about it in the first five steps. How are you, Samir? Sir, I think that if you are in dispassion the whole day, then you are relaxed. Means you are it is not essential that these things you should should be done should not be done you are not very means attached with the things right means, means you are not there you are relaxed and you take the things lightly <coughs> and if you are able to do it's okay if you are not able to do then also it's okay so yes means yes you you don't you don't think that I will really find happiness in all these things and these are very essential for me. If things happen, then also it's okay. If 
doesn't happen, then it's fine. I think so. I, I am relaxed old day just because I yeah. think there is a feeling of dispassion in my mind growing little bit. Very good. You see, one another master explains what is the purity of mind. You have a state of dispassion. That is what he explained beautifully. So, but uh, how the dispa uh, how the dispassion comes by discernment. How the discernment comes, I have to separate the impure mind from the pure mind. So it is the same process, but expression is different. Beautiful. How are you, uh, Dennis? Thank you for the lesson. I'm fine. Uh, uh, heard some hints uh, in the lesson for myself to double check my mind. Uh, as far as the practice, uh, after the breathing, uh, lots of sensations in the body, uh, and in fact, saw them still continue. Uh, then there was a sense of increased energy, uh, almost interfering with the mind <clears throat> and that the mind was not as calm as usual due to this sensation of energy at the final step. So I had to go back and forth with a triangle to calm the mind down and uh, restore the, the focus and, uh, uh, and, and keep the mind on the space at the end. And yes. then finally when I opened my eyes after the practice, uh, there was something was something changed like that like the perception changed i can't i can't really describe how exactly and what exactly it is but there is a change between the perception before the practice and after i opened my eyes beautiful that is where we are moving to if i explain in one sentence one phrase the entire Eastern wisdom, it is a complete change in my perception about myself, about the world outside, about the things, about the action, about the thought. There is a total change in perception. I will continue to communicate with the same thought, speech, alphabets, same expression, but my perception completely changes. Where is that? Now I see the real self is everywhere. Lot of things. We will talk about it. How are you, uh, Christina? Thank you. Um, the perception changing fits. Um, at the end, I had this experience of when I came back recognize the body it was almost foreign to me yeah and i got this sense of oh i'm part of everyone else's consciousness yeah and yeah so that's a very good experience you return and you recognize oh i have come to the body it means there was a kind of dispassion and detachment from the body it is again a perception Body is still there in the same way, but the perception results into because of the purification of the mind. And if it remains all the time, just think what happens. How very beautiful. How are you, Webhub? Thank you, sir. Some mind of calm. Then the sunny is that knowing the different kind of seekers with the different categories. I can check myself that where I am lying and what are the improvements that I have to do myself to move further. Yeah, yeah. That is why uh, our master teacher Krishna teaches there are four types of seekers and that is from that reference I explained. The fourth category, we have two categories. You can think of it that five or six thousand years ago, there were selected people, real people, who have a higher intellectual development or intellectual genius. Not everyone. But now, everyone since the birth, 
because of the technological advancement, that intellectual growth is very high. So, so principles are the same, but we have to pick up the principles in such a way which helps the intellect to understand. But previously there were rituals, there were many rituals. So through the ritual, that intellectual development used to take place. Good. How are you, Terry? We are enjoying. Hi, I'm. I'm. I'm good. Good. Mm -hmm. Do this practice daily. Maybe today you do it five times. How are you, Sandita? <laughs> Sangeeta. Uh, sir, uh, practice for the city of the day, and have one day like a Very uh, good. Sir, eight years old, he is a good day. 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 Yeah, yeah. My master used to say that love everybody. So here it is that love is impersonal. It is not related to the body and mind because the real self is of the nature of love. So what she is saying that it is not happening easily. Well, we have to continue the practice. We have to continue the practice to reach there so that we have a love for everyone. That is all for today. Thank you very much. We will meet again. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Thank you. Thank you.